Hi, Melinda Johnson here from Main Street Guyman, and we're going to tell you some interesting things happening in June here around Guyman area, and we're glad to have you with us. Okay, Jada, we're going to talk about some of the things that are happening in June during this period, and you've got a chamber event coming in that's the golf tournament, don't yes. you? Yes, on June 23rd. Can you tell us a little about it? Well, if uh, people have a four-person scramble team, if they register by June the 13th, they'll get two free mulligans. <gasps> is that good or is that bad? I don't know. I, I really don't know what a mulligan <laughs> is, but I think it's a good value. It used to be a stew where I came from. Well, it's worth $10. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so, you know. I, I never had it, $10 stew, but... <laughs> I'm stumped. I don't know what to say to that. I have not either, I guess. So what does the money from the tournament go to? It goes towards our programming for the year. It doesn't necessarily go towards one project or one um, source. It, it, it helps all of our projects or our operating costs. And, you know, it costs a little bit of money to keep the lights on and keep Buy me insurance. nice. Yeah, and keep me cool. <laughs> Oh, that's important. It is very important, especially during the summer. Yes. Yeah. But those are the things that that money goes for. And it's a good time. It's our 16th annual, so we've kind of worked some different things in the past, and we went back to the four-person scramble because it seems to work the best. That's nice. And it's a fun time. There's usually, you know, anywhere from... I don't know, 15 to 20 teams that, that play in it, and it's all cash hole-in-one prizes, and we do a putting contest, and we have people go out and, and just have fun. It's not f a for serious kind of a thing, so if you're like thinking that you're gonna get onto the PGA Tour, yeah, nah, it's not gonna happen with this. In fact, I think Sergio Alvidres actually, two years ago, golfed in his flaps, didn't he? Yes. Yes. Judy Zollinger did as well. Yes. Oh. So, you know, I don't think it's that serious. <laughs> and it's a good it's a good time. Do most people get their own team together and then enter up? Most people do, but there are some times that there's a new person to town that's maybe seeing the flyer up at the golf course and wants to play. So we try to fit them in with some other teams and see if they could, you know, join up and have some fun. Awesome. So do they call you or who do they, they can call? call me or they can call Guy Langham. Um, Guy Langham works at uh, Anchor D Bank and that number is 338-1000 and give him a heads up on what you want to do. We also have sponsorship packages available from anywhere from $50 to $350 so you can kind of pick what you'd like. And, you know, I, I don't golf, so I really don't know what to tell people about how it is, but we have a lot of people that are excited about going out and doing a, a team fun event on the golf course because it's such a beautiful course. Yes, I've heard a lot of, I'm, I'm with you, I'm not a golfer, but a lot of people compliment the course here in Diamond. Yeah, it's, it's something that they work really hard at. It's good. Okay. So let's talk about a couple of other things that are coming on. Okay. There's a monster truck shootout on June 2nd. That seems to be very popular. I know that they bring some trucks to town and they park them at sponsoring businesses and I think they give some tickets away and it, it it's loud. <laughs> And it's at 7 p.m. It's at 7 p.m. I know that they jump cars because they they ask if, if they could use my car, and I said no. Oh, you. I didn't want that. Well, huh. I like my car. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking the insurance isn't coming back on that one. <laughs> no. June 7th is the Shop and Dine. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. The local businesses, there's six of them that participate. Well, I heard that the, the new Western store oh, on Main Street good. went in on it this time. So, so they'll That'll be seven. Yeah. So we have SPC's Wow Boutique, Golden Crown, La Amistad, La Amistad, Merle Norman, Beauty and the Beast, Christine's, and now the Top Pen Western store. There we go. It's fun. That goes from four to seven. 
And it's very casual. Very casual and a lot of people smiling. Yes. They have they have snacks for you at the store and then all together they come and you sign up for a swag bag. And how you do it, they give you a card and each participating location they either punch it or stamp it and then when you're done you put your name and your phone number on it and they draw the next day and if you've won then you get the swag bag and it's pretty swaggy. I heard it's worth more than two hundred dollars. I'm sure it is. I know that um, I have never personally won it. Oh. My daughter won it which was not fair since I bought her stuff. She did not, well she shared some moose with me but from, from Beauty and the Beast. But I'm just saying All that right. was not fair. June 12th is the Co-op Connection. It is at PTCI North, which is oh, on good. Main Street, north of town. And from 12 to 1, you come in. Uh, TCEC, I believe, is who does that. And you and they have lunch for you, sandwiches and and a drawing usually of for a hundred dollars. Is it main bucks that they draw for? Sometimes it's main bucks and sometimes it is is for the store. Oh, that makes sense. So, That's I don't good. know. Either way, it would be a pretty good deal. Yeah, it's a hundred free dollars. I know. Cha-ching. Plus a free lunch. Wow. Well, why would you miss that? I don't know. I didn't miss it last month. I did. And then on, um, we, we do have some classes coming up in June. Oh. What Some artsy cr classes, a uh, painted rock class. Oh. I don't, I don't know what to tell you about it, but it's it's coming up. Is it like a pet rock? I wonder. <laughs> That'd be fun. I don't know. Okay. Well, it could be a harassing rock. <clears throat> but the other thing I wanted to talk about: Have you seen the new benches we've had? They are nice, and then people are buying them as memorials, and people are buying them as advertising and it's just a real nice it's beautiful isn't it well and then it ties in really nicely with those new trash cans that are downtown I know that sounds like small potatoes I guess in a large barrel but whenever you make little changes it makes a big impact it and, does and then they look really nice and uh, Main Street remember when we competed and Main Street beat you guys at that. I don't remember it in any of that let me remind you <laughs> Anyway, we took that money and bought the four new trash cans down there, and so we're... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was nice. Of I think people, like, cheated. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'll tell you why we won. Because it was your event. Well, it wasn't. It was just held here, but it was Elonco's event because we delivered to people. Oh. I can't. And I think they felt obligated to vote for us. I don't think that we could deliver. You could have, except you had a board meeting at the same time. Yeah. Cha-ching. That's why I'm saying you cheated. <laughs> it's, it works. So they planned it well. But the benches are. They're, they're going up, and the, all those are from the corrections. They have, uh, if you haven't seen them, they are just very well made. And then in the center, they have a little plaque that you can put your business name or your loved one's name or whatever it is that you'd like to put on there and, and it, it's a really good addition. I know that they're on some side streets, uh, Main Street and it's, I hope to... The Lions Club bought some and put them at the park too. Oh, nice. And when we were talking about the co-op connection, yeah. last month it was at the Golden Crown. Yes. And Nate and I got our sandwiches and sat out there on the benches. Oh. It was great. We miss Nate. Yeah. So, anyway, thank you. That's... That's good. That's a good cap of what's coming in June, and I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. It's All fun. right. Our next guest today is Darcy McKee. McKee. McKee with a K. That's it. Correct. I get McGee a lot. Uh, well, it, it, for some reason, it, it's easier to say. <laughs> And what he's, what you're going to do is first show us how to make a spring roll. Yeah, absolutely. And tell us why we should believe you. Why you should believe me. Uh, I got my culinary art degree in Denver at the Art Institute uh, in 2004. 
four, 15. 14. In 2014, I graduated. Man, it feels like a, such a long time ago. Um, uh, after that, I was working in primarily scratch kitchens in Denver, meaning we produce all of our ingredient from scratch, whether it be our breads, like hamburger buns, everything is from scratch. Um, I got the education, might as well use it. Who wants to cut things open and um, put them in a microwave? That's not really cooking. That's um, that's heating. That's heating, exactly. <laughs> Chef Mike, you don't ever want to use that word in uh, in the, in the uh, kitchen either. Um, I've been running my own, I ran my own deli, scratch deli in Denver uh, before we moved back here to Guymon. And I have been kind of on hold opening a new, uh, new venue here because I've been farming and doing carpentry and mechanic work and stuff. We bought a house north of town and that has been occupying so much of my time, but uh, helping my family out. So that's kind of uh, what's been going on. Um, I particularly like uh, Asian food, especially Southeast Asian food. Uh, it's very pungent, as you can tell. We got a lot of smells going on here that are uh, a lot of ginger, garlic, onions. Uh, once the Colombians brought, or once the Spanish brought the chili back over from the New World, that's where you start getting the heat. So Thai is actually one of the cultures. Thai and Vietnamese are one of those cultures that. Uh, they have restraint in their chili so like when they make their food it's not they use the chili for flavor not just to make it hot and burn you okay. out um, and so this is something what i like about the spring roll and why i'm showing you guys this today is that when it's about a hundred thousand degrees outside and you've been working all day whether for lunch or for dinner this is a very good meal it uh, doesn't require any cooking i just got some hot water from the tap right here and that you can use i already uh, did my noodles, but you could do your noodles and you can use the same hot water. You take your rice paper and we'll just lay that in here and we'll let that soak for just a second. And basically we're going to make a burrito. It's kind of, that's the, that's the most analogous thing I can think when it comes to rolling, to making your wrap, um, whether it's wonton wrappers, sushi rolls, anything like that. Um, most people don't have a familiarity with rolling cigars, so that usually doesn't work with most people, but the burrito is a good analogy. And um, they don't take long to soak, and they get real sticky, so when we put it back on our table, we'll get it, we'll leave a little lip on the edge there so we have something to grab onto. And I'll show you how we build a mosaic. Uh, when we're doing uh, spring rolls, sushi rolls, any things like that, we're looking, uh, roulades, even if we're doing something that's a European style, that if it's got something, uh, uh, if it's got something stuffed in something else, we always want to try to make it look pretty so that way when you open it up on the plate or when you cut into it, you say, wow. Or one of the coolest things in a kitchen is to see people pulling out their phones before they, you know, if they, they grab their phone before they grab their fork, that's a really awesome experience for a chef when you can see that. Usually we're too busy and you don't get to see that, but you hear about it or you get to see it on Yelp or something like that. You get a review. There we go. Nice. Such fine. And so we'll start out, we'll get us some bean sprouts here. Lay those there, we'll get us some, these are rice vermicelli noodles. So this is a really good dish. If you've recently had like a heart attack and you're trying to reboot your diet, this is a really good way to get something fresh and interesting in your diet. That's not just a salted, a lightly salted baked chicken breast. My dad had a heart attack years ago and it was one of the worst experiences ever, the family rebooting mills because they were oh, so bland, so terrible. And we'll get this little basil here. And you called this julienne? Yes, this is a julienne cut. A julienne would be a, a eighth, is an eighth of an inch. Uh, fine julienne would be less than that and that'd be our smallest cut. Uh, then you go up to batonets and uh, batons and you have to it helps to learn the jargon in the kitchen. It's not just for fancy show um, because you can say a whole lot with just one or two words. And when we're busy in a kitchen, I don't have a whole lot of time to explain things to you without just saying, hey, man, you know, run in the back and grab me this, cut it like this, and uh, we can get to cracking. So now you're burritoing it. Now we do our burrito fold, and we just roll it over. And there we go. And we got our shrimpies kind of showing through our paper right there. And one thing that you can do if you're going to make a bunch of these, I like to take paper towel and you just kind of get it damp and you can lay it down on a plate or on a 
cutting board or whatever and you can stick your spring roll in like that and then put another one down right here and just overlap them and that way they because if they stuck if they touch together they're done because that rice paper would be like the paste we used to have. yes and it's and again so let's we'll now do you just eat that like that or are you going to cook it or anything you can steam them if you have a vegetable basket to steam you can steam them in there you can uh you can fry them you can get different they have different kinds of rice paper for different applications so they have thicker ones that are more durable for frying uh, wonton wrappers and things like that but um, this just like that would but this be is a done. perfect this, perfect these summer are, and these, yeah it's for the summer when it's really hot outside um you know i don't like to eat heavy greasy foods because i am about to die um but uh this is another really good dish like i said somebody's trying to reboot their diet if you got diabetes if you've got a gluten issue there's no gluten in this dish right here that we're doing because um, you can use gluten-free peanut butter for the peanut sauce that we're doing, things like that. You can really manage. And you cooked the shrimp. Yes, I just, I actually dropped them into, so if you wanted to do this at home, you could get it, your, you can get a small pot of water boiling, drop your shrimp in there, which will brine your water, which will give flavor oh, to your, gotcha. it'll give you flavor to your noodles. And then you can take, you, so you can pull your noodles out Pull your, have your shrimp out, put the noodles in, bring the noodles out, pour a little pan of water for this, and now everything's actually got that shrimp brine flavor. We've got some seafood flavor going on in our dish. But your shrimp looks a lot different. I must obviously overcook mine. Yes. How long? Um, not very long. Just as soon as shrimp starts to turn um, opaque. So when you peel them, or whether you leave the shells on or not, it doesn't matter. The, it's, uh, the meat is fairly translucent. And so once you drop it in your water, it's also good. A lot of times it's good to use a, a pasta basket for your shrimp. So you're not trying to chase them down with tongs and stuff like that and waste your water, pour them through a strainer. Um, you can, and as soon as they get it, and one way to tell that you have good shrimp is if it snaps when you break it. Oh. And you can hear it a little bit. And that's, otherwise when you bend it over, if you bend it and it won't snap, then you've got overcooked seafood, and that's kind of how that that's works. Why, yeah. yeah, and those are the little again, those are those little finesse points that we we can't miss on those. Even when I'm cooking at home, every piece of chicken or any piece of meat, vegetable, anything I cook at home, it's I'm not saying ah, it's just my family; it won't matter. I do that with my vegetable cuts. I'm going to tell you guys right now: don't worry about doing fine knife cuts for your family. They're not gonna care or notice. They're just there for the flavor and the entertainment. They just like to be with there and it's a wholesome meal and that's what's important. Um, so I'll cut into this guy and we'll look at our, we'll look at our mosaic here. As you can see, we have nice noodle, we got shrimp, we got carrot, we got everything going on. If you wanna take this one. Now this peanut sauce is just peanut butter uh, some hot water to loosen it up, and soy sauce, ginger, a little bit of lime juice for, again, to your flavor if you want to lift it up. Same with the soy sauce, only add as much as you like it to be. Uh, you can add things like fish sauce, you can add chili peppers, anything hot. So let's go ahead and give it a shot and see how, it, uh, see how we did. Mm. I made a mess. That's that's all right. Mm. If you don't make a mess, it's not worth eating. Oh, this is fun. And this is a really good date night item as well. I mean, it's, like I said, it's fun to eat. They're easy to do. Um, It'd be fun to do make them together. Yeah, you just get shoulder to shoulder with your honey and um, go ahead and start making spring rolls. You make a half a dozen of these, and again, it. If you wanted to make so many that you got full, just keep making spring rolls. If you just wanted a snack, if it's a light lunch, um, I'll make these early in the morning. It takes me about 20 minutes to get all this ready, but that's, that's me moving pretty quick. Um, about 20 minutes, I'll make this stuff, and I'll put like a half dozen of them, and I'll do them with the paper towel wrap, like I said, and I'll drop them in a Ziploc bag, pop them in my lunchbox, and I'll be out swathing hay or doing something like that, and I can have some spring rolls and have something. Oh, tell me how long you cook the vermicelli. Uh, the vermicelli, about six to eight minutes. Um, you'll start to see they, they, um, they change color. They're very, it's almost the opposite of cooking your shrimp. They start out opaque, and they get a little translucency to them. You can also do the old 
fashion spaghetti noodle thing. You can take one out, whip it across the room, and if it sticks to the wall, it's good to go. Um, I prefer not to, just like with wheat noodles, I prefer not to um, shock them where you uh, drain them and then run cold water over them because that takes the starch out of them. And when you take the starch out of them, uh, it seems to, to me, uh, when you take the starch out of them, I don't know why this works. If they're starchy, they don't seem to stick to get, when you mix some oil with them, they don't seem to stick together. But if you wash that starch off and put oil on them, you start getting clumps of noodle. And I don't hmm. understand that one bit, but that's what's going on there, so. Now, tell me, you're, you're about to have some classes. Yes, I, so part of going to culinary school is if you want to get good at cooking, jump into a restaurant, uh, especially a short order bre breakfast place. That is, uh, you want to learn how to get really on point with cooking. You go jump in there and try to cook 150,000 eggs in about an hour, oh my. you know, and having a menu that's this long, like the ambassador, those guys up there do a great job because that menu is this long. It's got a front and back and uh, they cook, they're really good at their egg cookery and egg cookery is what we have pleats in our hats for. It's how many times, the old saying is it's how many ways you know how to cook an egg. Whether that's true or not, it doesn't matter. We like to, we just like to tell people that. Um, one of the things that I really love teaching about culinary art is if you, already know how to cook, I can help you with finesse points or broadening your knowledge of what's out there. And that's what culinary school does, is you get exposed to every culture, every cuisine that's out there. And the other great part about it is you learn how to run the business. You understand, you learn how to run the books, you have classes that teach you how to do that stuff. So when you're meal planning, you have nutrition classes, all that stuff. So I can talk to people about their diets, dieting. Um, and that's kind of what I want to do with my classes, teaching classes here. I really want to get people involved with either elevating their, elevating their skill or I want to expose people to the culture and some of the specifics of cooking, whether it be the diets or the, like I said, the cultures that surround these different dishes. And it gives us a chance to experience something that we may not be able to afford the plane ticket for. So you would a you would actually take suggestions on some classes. Absolutely. You? I uh, the first class that I that I I have people rounded up to to take to experiment on this will be my first uh, teaching outside of uh, obviously teaching people in the kitchen that I work in when you're in a leadership role but uh, to do an actual culinary class style class um, it would be definitely geared around practical usage. So for example, the first class that we want to do is cooking for two, whether you're a young couple or an empty nesters. Um, a lot of people either want to learn how to get that bud, that meal budget. How do we take $20 to the grocery store and get three meals out of it? Right. You know, we eat all the time in my house for about $350 to $450 a plate. And at a restaurant, when you think about the cost of that, that'd be about $12.5 a plate, but it only costs me $350 to make it. And we, that's, it, when we were living in Denver, uh, that made our entertainment dollar stretch further since we weren't having to go out and pay someone to cook a great meal. I could do it at home and then we could spend more money going to concerts and uh, comedy shows and things like that. And that's well, how and, I want to help people out here. You're it's, getting started on these just in time because our farmer's market opens up in yep, July. The farmer's market will be open and we'll be up, my girlfriend and I will be up there. We grow, um, we grow some different vegetables that most people don't really grow in their garden. We figured that out last year. Um, and we go up there and sell stuff. And yes, we're, school's out as well. So uh, I'm pretty talented, like I said, with baking and pastry stuff as well. I'm not, uh, even though my degree was in like savory cooking. Um, so if there's any young people, whether like high school age that are trying, that are thinking about going into culinary art, getting in the restaurant business, hotel restaurant management even, if you just want to be in, Bakery. If you want to be in that sort of field, if you want to pick up baking and pastry as something to do for a little side money, or if you just think it's cute, uh, you can, I can show you how to do any European style baking and pastry. We can work chocolate, we can pull sugar, uh, we can, I can teach people how to do some sculpting with chocolate and stuff like that. I'm not real great at it because like I said, I only had a few baking and pastry classes due to my coursework, but I did pick up a lot of it outside and in the industry, just trying to make myself more marketable.
So if somebody wants to, to talk to you about doing, doing some of this, how do they get a hold of you? Um, you can simply send me an email. It's the quite easiest way to do it, and it's my first name, Darcy, D-A-R-C-Y, at zanesdeli.com. Uh, that'll shoot me an email right quick and away, and you can also give me a call at 201-720-6991. Okay, now say that again, only slower. 201-720-6991. <laughs> okay. And um, I can do private instruction. Even if you just call me and just you want to send me an email and say, hey, uh, I've got... 100 pounds of brisket inexplicably, can I do something other than just cook it and do something else? Yeah, sure, well, I can throw you some recipes or point in a direction to, again, do something culturally. You can take you around the world and find something in order to get that meat used up. And like I said, I like people to uh, feed their family, have fun, get people around the table, and do something cathartic, I guess, is kind of ultimately where you end up going as far as the personal experience. Now, if somebody has health issues, are you a reasonable person when you said your dad had a heart attack? Mm -hmm. So you say, oh, John had a heart attack and we need to... Yeah, absolutely. Um, Would yeah. you even do classes for people with diabetes? Or absolutely. I was, um, uh, diabe uh, diabetes is actually one of the things that I focused on when I was in culinary school, when I was studying nutrition. Uh, because uh, I've got so, a handful of family members with it, oh. and it also seems to be the health, one of the health issues that is um, getting more, ha more and more people are be being diagnosed with diabetes, especially later in life, which is an interesting situation. People may be 40 years old before they find out they have diabetes, and you're like, I've been eating... And, this it, way and for it's so a diabetes long. that often can be controlled by the diet. Absolutely, and it's, some things are just as simple as eating, uh, eating fruit, and simple proteins like getting yourself some, like eating some eggs and a little bit of fruit, some nuts. Within 30 to 45 minutes of waking up in the morning, it locks your glycemic level right where it's at when you get up, and that helps. And even if that, even if you eat that way, and you don't have diabetes, it's what prevents that two o'clock crash when you start coming down from lunch. Uh, by locking your sugar in right there in the morning, you can hmm. power right through the afternoon. Well, I'm looking forward to planning and scheduling a bunch of these classes and me too. I, sharing them with the community. And I appreciate you for having me. This is a lot of fun. Oh, thanks for coming, Darcy. Thanks. Mm -hmm.